Well, thank you very much for joining me up here. This is going to be a very interesting discussion. As it was suggested there, this is a huge growth market. Almost half of the, the pharmaceutical industry's growth over the next uh, five years will come from emerging markets. So we're going to really look over the next course of the next hour at what the challenges are, what the hurdles are, what the opportunities are, and how we're stacking up in that area of the world. And of course, look as well at you know the differences, because I think there is sometimes a tendency uh, in the confines of this huge country to think it's just the rest of the world. And of course, the rest of the world can be very different uh, in and amongst themselves as well. So we'll get into a bit of that as well. We're going to... Um, speak up here for about 40 minutes or so and then I'll throw it open for questions. I'm not a scary school teacher so do feel free to jump in with your questions and I've told my panelists that I run my panels a little bit like I run my four children that they're uh, free to jump in on each other but uh, we'll try and keep it as civil as we can so that I don't have to be a strict mother. Um, Let's start by looking at what the goal is of pharma in emerging markets. I mean, that seems to be the logical place to begin, David. I and mean, if you look at what we're trying to achieve in emerging markets, how would you characterize it? I guess as an academic, I sometimes bring problems rather than solutions, but I guess you guys can do the solutions. It appears to me that... Okay, Samir, would you say that there are these complications in what pharma is trying to do in emerging markets that David points to? Yes, definitely. I mean, as David said, the case for doing, for why we do business in the emerging market, it's very clear. So, sorry, just to clarify, you're, would you be able to encapsulate the goal then of what we're trying to do, whether or not we're succeeding? How would you actually say what pharma is trying to do in emerging markets, what it should be trying to do? Yeah, I, I think what pharma and we as individual companies would need to do in the emerging market, it's but what of what we have started to do recently. I know that your, um, your work has been particularly in Russia, and we will get a little bit more into the differences between different areas of emerging markets in just a minute, but I do want to give you a chance too to outline what you see as the goal. What is it that we're really trying to do in emerging markets? So if I could comment uh, on my colleagues' points, because I think it's important. Well, David took issue with the idea that this, of, of the premise that this represents 40% of growth over the next five years, um, particularly if that growth is really just from demand rather than from the potential for actually creating markets and getting returns. Do you, do you agree with that, or do you think the potential is there? I think the potential is there. It's exactly what Scott was saying. Let me demonstrate one thing. Before we get into the trap of assuming that all the rest of the world is homogenous, uh, David, let's just start by um, outlining some of the differences that we see in different emerging markets. Because of course, the, what you, the problems and the hurdles you might face in China are very different from Russia, are very different from Latin America. Well, as a background. Not to mention Africa. As a background, if we take 1800. How do the experiences that David was outlaying there compared to the experiences that you've had, particularly working in Russia, for example, because that's, again, a very different market from China or India or what we might think of as the emerging markets. You know, I, I give the, uh, the government of Russia a lot of think credit. Are learning better now? Do you, think, do you think industry is more conscious? I mean, I, I imagine most of the people in this room would be surprised by your figure about Russia. So, uh, I, first of all, I start with the biology is basically the right, same. Samir, do you have experiences of that too from the Asia-Pacific region of, w of where we're in? Um, Scott mentioned the Indian example there. Do you think there is going to be more two-way traffic in terms of technology and innovation? Definitely. I think, you know, partnering with, uh, with uh, Indian companies. I want to talk a little bit more about what you said in terms of your partnerships with governments because this seems to be a, a key factor in how we work in different countries. You mentioned the differences between India and China. and I remember um, John Castellani telling me a, a while ago about China's medical health innovation program and they have something like a 40-year program and you know they're going to stick to it and implement it. But doesn't that also um, produce huge amounts of uh, competitive problems for us. I mean, they, they are investing in their own innovation and technology, and what then becomes the role for external companies in that situation? Yeah, it's like you are helping build your competitor. future competitors, right. right? So, so I think, you know, you know, it's a difficult. David, thing. I want you to jump in there because you, you you're the one that's come up with some uh, more skeptical comments about the future prospects. Um, and is it, but is the model that Samir has laid out? the one that's basically going to work. Well, the world's a hard Your place. Your experience with the Russian government seems to have been very positive. It is, absolutely. Do you agree with David that there is a clash of 
interests, or necessarily one. You know, I, I think we've seen this around the world. If, uh, if anyone does have any questions for the panel, then uh, thank you. Do uh, feel free, otherwise we will continue up here. Well, keep thinking. <laughs> um, I, I wanted to get to the issue, and we, and we touched on it earlier, about whether we think that some of the work that you're doing in emerging markets can actually then have benefits for patients back here in the United States and um, in Europe, in other developed countries. And I think, I'm not sure if it was you, Samir or Scott, who mentioned some of the medical advances that are being done, for example, in China, where they're clearly investing in that. Do you think that by working with patients in emerging markets, we will see actually a two-way traffic? David, start with you. Well, for me, again, better use of older products, first of all. If we take cardiovascular disease,